Naples. Naples is a city of mysteries and legends. It's a Christian city with pagan undertones. It's a place where some people say that pre-Christian rites still carry on. It's a bustling modern city, but it's built on a labyrinth of ancient underground caves and tunnels. It's a city where the relationship with the dead has always been part of life. I want to tell you about Il Culto dei Morti, the worship of the dead, and about two places connected with it. The first one is Il Cimitero delle Fontanelle, the cemetery, and it's actually more like a huge underground quarry. The cemetery of the Fontanelle is in the Sanità district under the church of Maria Santissima del Carmine. It is a huge echoing cave carved out of tufa stone lit by flickering candles where thousands and thousands of skulls, thigh and leg bones are piled up in the half light. It was described by a traveller as un immensa cattedrale della morte, a huge cathedral of death. At the time of the plague in the 1600s, out of 400,000 people, only 100,000 survived, and the dead were simply piled up in caves under the city. Many of the dead had no name, there wasn't time to even give them one. And so began the popular practice of praying for the lost souls, the pezzentelle, the anime abbandonate, the lost souls in purgatory, so that they could get to heaven. People adopted the skulls, each one an anima pezzentella, an unknown soul with nobody to pray for it. They visited, they brought them candles, they brought them flowers, and they said requiems for the anima pezzentella that they had adopted. In return, they expected grazie e protezione, they expected favours to be done for them. If the skull did the favour that they asked, they placed it in a little house of wood, a little box of wood or marble to protect it from the dust, usually with the words per grazia ricevuta, for the grace received. If the skull didn't come through with the grace and didn't manage to, to protect them and to provide this favour, it was generally abandoned in favour of a new skull. Some of the skulls were even given names. For example, a very popular one was Lucia, after Santa Lucia, and they gave those skulls special treatment. The cemetery was opened to the public in 1872, and the worship of the bones carried on until 1969, when the church had it closed. The church basically didn't really approve of this um, ritual. It reopened again in 2007, and you can visit it if you go to Naples. The other place I want to talk about is the Chiesa di Santa Maria delle Anime del Purgatorio ad Arco. Uh, this church is in Via dei Tribunali, in the centre of Naples, and uh, it's usually just called for short the Purgatorio. Everybody knows it as Purgatorio. It was founded by a religious confraternity which was set up to pray for the souls in purgatory so that they could reach heaven. And outside the church, there are three bronze skulls uh, positioned at the one edge, in the centre, at the far edge. So the one nearest the street is worn down by people's hands caressing it. The Neapolitans, as they go past, stroke the skull to ask for, for luck or for grace or for a favour. Underneath the church, there's an underground crypt where, from 1600, people practice the culto dei morti, or the worship of, of the dead. The crypt, like the church, is decorated with skulls and, and bones, and it's also got niche in where the skulls are placed. For centuries, right up to 1980, people continued to pray to the dead with no name, the anime pezzentelle, with up to 50 masses a day. Worshippers brought flowers, they brought candles, and they brought ex voto to represent the parts of the body they'd had cured, um, to obtain favours from these anime pezzentelle. Their favourite skulls were decorated with necklaces and crucifixes. Um, there's a skull of Santa Lucia, or Lucia as she's known, and that has a neon light, rather like an American diner. Um, it's very heavily decorated. The church has tried to discourage this cult, but it's carried on in secret, and I know a friend of mine went to take some pictures of the crypt. There was nobody there. When he developed the pictures, he found there were two women who were carrying out some rite on the floor who definitely hadn't been there when he took the pictures. <laughs>